Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we bring you the biggest ballistics test you've ever seen as Byron Pace sets up a slick subsonic head-to-head -head between six leading brands of .22 rimfire ammo. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world including in-depth coverage from last week's Clay Shooting Classic. Lately, I've been doing a lot of rabbit shooting with the 2.2 rimfire, but what do you need to look for in 2.2 ammo, and which brand offers the best value? My search for answers has led me to a shooting range in Warwickshire. Today, we're doing some very exciting rimfire testing. We're going to try and answer the question, which is the best rimfire round to use for hunting? We're going to put six of the big brands through an accuracy test and then we're going to shoot it into some ballistic gel to see how the terminal performance compares and at the end of it we're going to conclude and give you that answer. We'll be using the Maton electronic target that gives exact readouts of group sizes and what the group would have scored in a competition. After a few barrel warmers it's down to business. First grouping test Ely subsonic 40 grains. We've sped this up in the edit, but the first round saw me shoot a group of 10 for each make of ammunition. Second, RWS 40 grain subsonics. Up third is Fiocchi 40 grain subsonics. Fourth in line, Winchester subsonics, also 40 grains. Up fifth, slightly lighter than the rest, 38 grains, the Remington Subsonics. Next up is CCI 40 grains. Two interesting things to note to this point is that I had a slightly uh, tougher bolt drop on one or two of the Remington cases. And for some strange reason, on the Winchester cases, they didn't eject the same as the rest. They seemed to fly out a little bit more forward than straight out to the side. Just small observations to this point. So we've had a chance to shoot each brand of ammunition now. Now we're going to go ahead and shoot 30 shots of each brand all in one go. At the end of the day, we'll average out the group size of everything just to give a really good representative sample and reflection of each type of ammunition. Three more groups with each lot of ammunition means I've got another 180 rounds to fire. Who said reviewing guns and ammo is easy? With barrel cleans between each batch, we ensure there is a fair test and soon shot data begins to mount up. It's time to analyse the results and I've got a few other observations too. So that's all the results in from the accuracy testing of the rimfire ammunition that we're looking at today. Interestingly, the Winchester ammunition seemed to throw uh, the cases out a bit differently to the rest. Uh, most of the other uh, brands threw it out straight out to the side, almost at 90 degrees and quite far away from the rifle. The Winchester seemed to be more out to the front. You can only assume that that's something to do with the size of the rim, because obviously that's what the, uh, the rifle is grabbing as you draw the bolt back. Remington, there was one or two rounds on uh, the Remington which were a bit stiff on the bolt close through the whole camming action. Uh, it was only one or two of the, the 40 that we fired, um, but it's still worthy of note because I didn't have that with the rest of them. Although, having said that, um, it was notable that on the CCI, 
the last part of camming and locking the bolt down was a lot stiffer than all the other brands um, individually. Uh, lastly, the Fiocchi ammunition was certainly dirtier than the rest. Um, there wasn't much to choose between all the other brands, but when it came to pushing the patches through to get the rifle in a clean state for the next one, Fiocchi definitely required, I'd say, probably about twice as much cleaning as the rest. Down to the accuracy, and there is one clear winner. The Ely Subsonics outshone the rest by quite a considerable margin. If I have a look through the results here, we can see that the overall group size of the 40 shots that we fired uh, was 24 uh, millimeters, or just a bit over 24. The next closest was RWS, uh, which was the, the second lot of ammunition we tested at 33 millimeters. And then it went up um, to Winchester at 38, and then we were 40 from there on after. Remington was by far the biggest group at 68 millimeters. And the difference between the rest, there, there wasn't much to choose. Uh, but at the extremities between Ely and the Remington, it is quite considerable, 24 to 68. The next thing we're going to be doing is testing it, uh, all of these uh, brands of ammunition through ballistic gel blocks, and we'll get a good picture of how the terminal performance compares. First shot into the gel block, Ely subsonic. I'll be using two blocks, firing three rounds into one. Next up is Winchester. Initial impressions, Ely versus Winchester. Ely on my left here, Winchester on the right. We'll measure it a little bit later to compare them all, but Ely has slightly greater penetration, uh, not by much. The expansion looks pretty similar, it's hard to call right now. Early on, about an inch and a half on the, uh, on the Ely wound track, you can actually see a lot more um, damage or expansion, if you want to call it that, about an inch and a half in. So I'm not sure if that's to do with the way it's expanding, or maybe it's twisted or, or tumbled slightly. Now it's the turn of RWS ammo to get some slow-mo scrutiny. Well, that is interesting. I'll need to measure it to be sure, but it certainly looks like the RWS has penetrated further. It hasn't tumbled, whereas the other two are not facing in the correct orientation that they were fired in. Um, and it certainly has very consistent expansion, as we can see here. We will see when we dig it out if it has more or less uh, than the other two. But what you can also note is that the increased amount of damage that there is in the wound tract in the first two inches, a little bit like we saw with the Ely, but uh, there's certainly more of it with the RWS. Back on the firing point, I quickly chamber a second batch of ammo, Fiocchi, CCI, and Remington. very obvious here that the, the Remington ammunition that we fired has had almost twice the penetration of anything else. It's almost acted as a solid and of course if it's acting as a solid and it's not mushrooming, it's not slowing down as quickly and you're going to get greater penetration. Uh, between the other two here there's not much to call between them. Penetration depth is almost the same. Visually looking from here without measuring it the expansion looks pretty similar. So the next step is for us to go back into a clean environment where we can cut these uh, gel blocks open and actually start measuring everything up. What I've done for the testing is take each of the extracted bullets from the gel, uh, measure them across their diameter and take an average of a, a number of measurements. And that gives me a, a reasonable and fair way of judging how much each bullet 
has expanded. We've already seen that Ely was the most accurate ammunition by quite some considerable margin. But what is interesting is that it also proved to have the greatest expansion. 9.9 millimeters, just a tad over. In second position was Winchester with 9.825. And we, we kind of expect that to be there. There's a lot of people who use Winchester, and Winchester and Ely are very tight rivals. Next in line after that was Fiocchi with 9.35, and then the other three followed. The deepest penetration was seen with the Remington ammunition, which is what we expect. It didn't expand, and so it's causing less resistance on, on its travel. And it uh, managed to penetrate a full 39.5 centimeters before stopping. The other brands were much of a muchness. Uh, RWS, Fiocchi, CCI were all between 25 and 26 centimeters, all sharing fairly similar um, diameter and expansion. So that is what you, uh, you would expect from that data. But what it also means is that they are expanding roughly at the same rate, because otherwise you would end up with a large difference in the end uh, penetration. 21, 22 centimeters is ample for doing what we want to do, which is pass through uh, a carcass, which is you know only about yay big. Think about the chest cavity or the head of a rabbit. But we can see from those numbers, 21 and 22.5 compared to the rest, that it is expanding at a rate that is quicker. And that is why the penetration depth is shorter. It gives a really good basis for people going and picking ammunition for hunting. Uh, it is important not to just look at the accuracy, which we looked at first, but also its effect on the game that we're intending to kill with it. And in the, the coming weeks, hopefully we'll actually show you a bit of footage on the shooting show of us using this ammunition in the field. Food for thought for rimfire hunters there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Mark Windsor has made it a hat-trick of clay shooting classic victories. Mark demolished 72 of Steve Lovett's clays on the blue course at Windrush Shooting Ground, then matched that score on the red course to take high gun by four targets ahead of Chris Broomfield. Uh, I didn't think last year and the year before that that I'd do it um, three years on the bounce with the same score as well. Um, but yeah, again, another another victory. Um, take the trophy home again. Brilliant. So happy. Really am. Really pleased. Steve's courses, there's no gimmies out there. Everything has to be, everything has to be on the gas all the time. You can't, you can't take any targets for granted. They've got to really be, everything's got to be taken, you know. But I just take every shoot as it comes. Um, enjoy every shoot that I shoot and it's never a chore for me. Every every time I compete, I've been shooting nearly 20 years now and it's still I've still got that passion from the day you know the day I started to, to, to now, you know, so it's yeah it's it's it's, it's good. Chris Biddlecombe took the AAA class crown, Gordon Botine did the double in veterans and double A, and Janine White did the same in A class and ladies. Josh Brown won a hat sun from Edgar Brothers for his B class win, as did Jeff Bone in C class. Aaron Harvey hit 131 to take the junior prize, and Ronnie Green topped his cult rivals to win a shotgun and should eat cartridges. For the first time in nine years, the classic sport trap returned. Martin Myers took home the trophy after a tense shoot-off with defending champion Paul Simpson. In an incredible festival of shooting with nearly £40,000 worth of prizes handed out, shooters and exhibitors said they couldn't wait to come back next year. It's, it's just an, it's an important event for us and it's one of the first in the season so it's, it's always gone down well. It's always been a, a very good shoot um, and I think it's definitely one that we want to uh, continue to look at in, in, in sponsor. Interesting, quite a few people have brought their guns in for, for servicing which is obviously a, a service that we give for our, our Zolly shooters. Uh, just not only people who are our sponsor shooters, but also people who have got Zolly guns and want something, maybe altering, or we had somebody here yesterday who wanted their stock altering, and uh, he's now really, really happy you know, with the small alterations that uh, Emilio's been able to do here. It is the biggest sporting event in the UK. We sold cartridges yesterday to a gentleman who's flown all the way from Norway just to shoot the Classic this weekend for the first time. So it just shows what appeal it really has. And there's been success for British shooters abroad too. 
At the first ever European Games, Amber Hill shot her way to gold in the women's skeet. The 17-year-old showed incredible composure to edge out Italian Diana Boccozzi in a 30-target shoot-off. Then, last weekend, George Digweed won his 25th world title at the World Compact Sporting Championship in Estonia. It was a double whammy for Britain as Cheryl Hall also took the top spot in the ladies' category. Shooting estates covering more than 70% of the land in Scotland could lose their tax relief in less than two years. The Land Reform Scotland Bill has been introduced and confirms the government's plans to impose non-domestic rates on shooting and deer stalking destinations across Scotland. Basque's Colin Shedden said the move was regrettable and called for a full impact assessment of the new rates. Shooting currently contributes £200 million a year to the Scottish economy. Tickets for next year's British shooting show have gone on sale early. Taking place once more over three days at Stony Park, the show is once again expected to be a massive event with the best of British shotguns, rifles and air guns on show. There'll be well over 300 trade stands including the biggest names in shooting. Save the dates now, the 12th to the 14th of February 2016. Head to shootingshow.co.uk to book. The 2014 stag season was remarkable and distinguished according to the ADMG, which has released its review of the season. Reports noted that deer were in good condition, though after a dry summer, weights were down on previous years. Highlights included a 27-stone beast grassed on the Ardteller estate and two 25-stone specimens on the Isle of Arran. Keep up with deer stalking news and stories in Sporting Rifle magazine. Two members of the gamekeeping and shooting community received honours in the Queen's birthday list. Gareth Edwards was knighted for services to sport and for charitable services. And Theresa Dent, Chief Executive of the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, has been awarded a CBE for services to wildlife conservation. And don't forget, it's less than five weeks until the CLA Game Fair. Save money on tickets by buying online now. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.